welcome to this week's Swarf and Chips. This is what's coming up on today's show. Now, this week we're over in Bielefeld in Germany. It's a Starag takeover show. Now, normally we find it quite difficult to track Mark down, but we have found him and he's at the Droop and Rhine factory. This factory is a place where they build machines for major blue chip manufacturing companies. Machines that can take anything around about 18 months to build. So big machines, intricate machines. I've got a funny feeling you are going to enjoy this week's episode. Over to Mark. Lee, thanks very much for inviting us to Droop and Ryan, which is part of the Starag Group. Now, you was telling me the other week that you have machines that can engrave on a needle head. However, what is Droop and Ryan, and what do you produce here? Well, Mark, Droop and Ryan is the polar opposite of that. At Droop and Ryan, we manufacture our largest machines in the group. So these are very large gantry machines. Now, what makes you different then? Well, there's three types of machine. There's a gantry machine where the table moves under the gantry. There's a gantry for very large products where the gantry moves over the table. And Droop and Ryan developed the first overhead gantry machine, the FOGS machine, as we call it. Droop and Ryan have got a great heritage, but could you explain a little bit more, Lee? Well, Droop and Ryan started in 1890, and they were based down near the railway station in a large unit. In 2000, they moved to this facility here, and as you can see, this particular hall, which is just one of two halls, has a 20 metre uh, dimension from the floor to the crane hook, which is why we can make such large machines here. And the type of machines that you're actually making here are what? Well, as I said before, these are all gantry machines, but we, we specialise in different industries. So um, energy is a large market for us, whether it be sort of nuclear, steam turbine, wind turbine, um, shipbuilding and, and marine industry is very big for us, mould and dye is a good industry for us and the aerospace industry is very big for this, uh, for this plant as well. So some of gantry machines, they, they do machine very soft materials, but can you also machine on hard materials here? Well, that's an interesting question Mark, because we make uh, the FOGS machine in a very, very accurate form for cutting carbon fibre composites where there's interchangeability issues in the field but most of our machines are made for hard metals, so mould and dye industry, or shipbuilding or energy, where we're looking at large structures with difficult to machine materials and also very difficult applications and features to machine. We try and do everything in a single setup, so we're reducing the, the cost to manufacture. And when you're looking at uh, other options that are better than your competitors, I see that you've got a full integrated spindle workshop here and also repairs. Does that give you a distinct advantage in the marketplace? Well, that's absolutely unique. I think we're the only people I know of that actually design, manufacture and refurbish our own heads. We don't buy them from a third party. So we've got over 300 heads available today. And the way we work, Mark, is people come to us, they bring a component and we look at it and we say, well, OK, to manufacture this component in a single setup, you need to hold it in this way, you need all these specific heads to do the job. And then we automatically change the heads, we automatically change spindles in the heads, we change tools into the spindles in the heads. So we, we, we're delivering a fully automated process to the customers. I know we're going to look at the machines a little bit later, but how big are these machines? How, can, how big can you actually manufacture them? Well, the hall we're stood in at the moment, when I first visited this plant, three quarters of the hall was taken up by one machine. So we're looking at a table of 20 metres by 8 metres and an 8 metre reach to the, to the spindle from the tabletop and spiral staircases either side just for the maintenance people to get up and down the, the, the gantry of the machine. So huge machines, Mark. Now, Lee, I've got to say, what, what an impressive machine that you've got here. Could you tell me a little bit more about the machine and what it's for? Well, I can. This is what they call an FOGS machine. It's an overhead gantry machine with a, with a ramped spindle. What's also special about this particular machine is we're standing on an eight and a half metre turning table. So what makes this uh, special then, this uh, table? Well, 
this not only is a milling machine, it's a turning machine. So at the end of this ram here, we've got interchangeability of the heads. So for turning, we've got a multi-tool turret system that sits on the front of the, the, the ram. We've got a number of different long reach, short reach, angular heads specifically for components on, on this type of machine. We've also got, in this case, a fully programmable five axis fork head within which we can interchange then uh, motor spindles and, and a gear driven spindle system and within that we can automatically change the tools. So it's a fully automated system for turning, milling and any other functions that you want to do on this machine. So I know this is a big table but it's a solid machine Lee, I mean this must be uh, machining some really big heavy components. Well, we do we do two variants of this overhead gantry machine and this is the heavy duty variant as, as you rightly say Mark. We were the first people, we invented this system in 1973. We've built over 130. It's developed over numerous iterations. And we think this is a market leading machine. And when you say earlier on, what makes you different? I suppose these spindles do make a difference when you're building them in-house and bespoke to the customer's needs. Well, all of these heads are built in-house. So we design them in-house, we build them in-house. It means we've got the control through the life of the machine to bring them back in and refurbish them. So customers have got a one-stop shop. I don't think anybody else offers that, Mark. And I suppose with the gantry option, you can go, what, 20 metres and beyond if need be? Depending on the type of machine configuration. But yeah, we've built a machine in this hall when I first joined the company, 20 metres by 8 metres by 8 metres under the tool from the tabletop. So we can make some big machines here. But also you make some smaller machines. We're going to go and have a look at those now, yeah? We certainly are. Let's go and have a look. Lee, I know we're not allowed on this machine because it's going through its uh, test motions at the moment for healthy safety reasons. However, this is the same machine you tell me, but there's a twin ram on here. But tell me why. Well, as, as we spoke about earlier, Mark, we look at the component. And in this particular case, this customer wanted to be able to rotate components on the table, which is why we've got a rotating axis on the table. They wanted multiple parts on the table, two working zones, and they wanted to produce parts with very high productivity. So two rams give us two, gives us two parts for the price of one. Now I see that it's uh, fully automated as well with over 300 tools, I understand. In this particular case we've got 350 tools, the, the, the number of tools is infinite, so we've got a robot on a, on a moving rail, we pick the tool up, we deliver the tool to the spindle, we can change the spindle, the cartridge, the head, the tool into any, any angle all automatically and we feed that in through the side of the machine. So the side walls as we've said before on this overhead gantry system would normally be an integral part of the foundation and that's built into the, uh, the civil so that the robot's got access to change the tools. So I see there's two work zones on that. Is that basically 24-7 machining? Is that what they're looking for, the customer? It's exactly that, Mark. So effectively, whilst you're cutting on the first two uh, stations that you can see behind, the operator's in and he's exchanging components in the second work zone, and then when he's ready to cut there, the first work zone's then ready to change the components over. So you can run this machine 24-7. Yeah, again, it's a very bespoke machine for your customer's need, and I'm, I'm sure the spindles are part of that again, are they? Well, it is bespoke, but it's made up of a standard kit set of technologies that we've got available. So in most cases, we just look at the components and we build from what we've got today. In some cases, if we have to develop a new technology to be able to access a component, again, as I've said before, we make our own heads, so we develop special heads especially for that. I think it shows you the diversity of type of machines that you can actually build from a gantry. It does, and this is only one type of gantry we've looked at today. Lee, we've reached another part of the factory here with another variation of an overhead gantry. Could you tell us a little bit more about this machine? Well, this is a very dynamic variant of the FOGS machine, Mark. So we've got 40 metre axis travel rates, which is, which is fast on, on a large machine like this. And we've got built into this the high speed spindle, high performance spindle for cutting aluminiums and composites in aerospace and then for, for materials like carbon fibres um, for airframe components and then hard materials in the mould and dye industry as well. So when you talk about your customers, they've got a lot of different needs. It's not necessarily just about the sector, the component, but it could be the material as well, Lee. 
It's the material, it's the, it's the profile tolerances of the material, it's the cycle time, and ultimately it's the profitability that they get from the machine, and that's the key to this. It delivers very high, uh, very high speeds, delivers very high accuracy, and it gives it very high uptime as well, so it's a very reliable per machine that people can uh, invest in. And when you put up against your competitors with what you've got here, over 100 years of manufacturing, obviously inventing the overhead uh, gantry to a certain extent, but also you've got that spindle uh, element to your business. It's actually making a bespoke spindle for your customer. It must be a big niche for you guys. Well, every job's different. Nobody comes to us for a, a, a catalogue page three item. They come to us with a component. We look at the solution, we deliver a proposal, and that proposal has to, has to deliver a commercial benefit to the customer. And as you've seen, we're very busy. We're, we've got a successful uh, business in the full shop floor at the moment, Mark. Well, I know we've done a, a number of videos here on some of your machines, but I'm really interested to look at your uh, spindle uh, services here. So we're going to take a look. Is that okay? That sounds good to me. Lee, it's been a fantastic journey through the factory here, looking at a number of different configurations at Droop and Ryan. But one of your USPs here is the heads and the spindles here. Can you tell me a little bit more? We're standing just at the end of the, the, the build line. We can only show you what's coming out the back. The secrets are hidden behind me. But you can see a number of, uh, number of components behind me that just typify the type of head that we develop for, for, specific, uh, for specific applications. So it depends on the material we're cutting. It depends on the accessibility of that particular feature to reach to as to the design of the head. As, as we've said already today, Mark, these are all manufactured in-house. The serviced in house, the refurbished in house, and that's pretty unique. And does that give you a distinct advantage over your competitors in the marketplace? Well, it does because a lot of people are buying these in from third party companies that may not even be around in five years' time. So if a program's running for 20 years, our customers can rely on us being able to supply those components and looking after those components for the next 20 years and through the life of the program, which is very important. And where do you see your growth, Lee? Where is, is it the aerospace market, power generation? Where, 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 over the next 20 years, will you be servicing customers? Well, I think it's in all sectors, Mark. I mean, we've seen a big increase in the UK in the automotive sector. So for, for, from a mould-making perspective, there's opportunities. There's been massive growth in aerospace, as we've discussed in the past. But power generation, the energy market, there's tidal coming on board, there's wind energy coming on board, there's marine coming on board. So th there's a lot of opportunities for Droop and Ryan in the future. Walking through this factory, you said to me that there was an expansion in 2009. And based on the success you have now and obviously into the future, do you think that you could be adding on here to, as well? Well, that's, the <laughs> that's a big question. We've already got a second build hall here with 20 metres under the crane and it's full but it's cyclical, so as, as, as machines go out, the next wave of machines comes in. But uh, at the minute, this, this facility is big enough for our current needs and demands. Well, I hope you enjoyed the Starag takeover here at Droop and Rhyme in Germany. Now, I'll tell you what, you know, I'm standing on one of the gears of the rotary table that you actually saw at the first machine with Lee Scott. Now, it's been a fantastic journey looking at these big machines, but you've also got to consider Starag have a multitude of different products in their portfolio, and one of them all the way down to actually engraving a head of a needle. I hope you've enjoyed the show this week, guys. Look forward to seeing you next week. Cycle Time Challenge. Guys, Cycle Time Challenge this week. We're at BTEC Engineering in Bracknell. Now, they've got some absolutely fantastic machines, and the components they make are absolutely superb. Bit of automotive, bit of aerospace. In fact, I recognise some of the parts from when I've been travelling business class. OK, then maybe not. But they have got a couple of BMG Mori 60 Evo linears. Full five axis, simultaneous machine. They're absolutely raving about them. And this part we're looking at here, now that used to be done in three ops, 55 minutes, and as Mark from BTEC said, there's not a flat face on the part. Really, really impressive piece of work. Now, I'll give you one clue. It's now done in one op. But how long do you think it takes? Wow, what a show and what a facility. A massive thank you to Starag for having us. And don't forget, there is still time for you to put your guesses for the Cycle Time Challenge in the comments box below. 
Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you want to watch any previous episodes, click on the links here. And as we always say, keep those spindles turning.